Hello everybody and welcome back to the FM23 Guys the Youth Academy only save and um, yes, yes, welcome back. Right, let's get those fancy arrows across the screen because today is new intake day and this is the best day of these saves and I've never been so excited for intakes because this one, as we show on the screen right now, is uh, a lot of A's. There's a lot of A's. We don't have a huge sort of like broad positions but we have very specific positions with a ratings for youth intakes which is awesome and i'm very very excited by that but obviously before we go and look at the new intake of youth players we will have a little look at the league where we find ourselves in ninth one place off the playoffs it's been a fantastic season for Geisley. Chesterfield have completely run away with it. We're not going to be bothering about looking at them. But yeah, we're up into ninth position. It's been a um, great start, terrible middle, a little bit of a rebound. And now we've just, well, we've lost two in a row. In fact, I think we've lost and drawn, haven't we? Yeah, we've lost 2-1 and, uh, and then drew 2-2 with Oxford City. But... It's getting better year on year on year, which is absolutely awesome. The eagle-eyed amongst you will realise that we have changed skin. Uh, we've got a new FM skin on the go, which is uh, the Electric Panther skin, as it says in the bottom left, if my face isn't covering it. But uh, yeah, it's we're, we're doing really, really well. And a lot of that is, uh, is thanks to someone who is currently injured. So if we look at all available players we have here, appearances-wise, Carl Trinari still doesn't miss games in the league. 50 appearances for us in all competitions. Adam Hoare, 41 starts, 6 substitute appearances, 31 goals throughout the career. Paul Byrne at the back, again, superb. And why... I picked this skin, and I think this is a great page to show you why we've got this skin, is because, one, you get a lot more information in one place, which is good. Um, we get to see what he's doing in terms of some defensive stats if we want it, where his positions are, uh, his sort of personal information. More importantly, though, we get to see his progress. And as you can see, Paul Byrne has been progressing quite a lot throughout the season or throughout the year, and uh, that is something I'm very very excited to keep an eye on having that on the home page is just awesome when you go in to look at players it's really really good uh, and then of course you can come in here and you can look at everything you need to uh, anyway which is good uh, we're his favorite personnel which is lovely uh, and able to play for the club without a work permit that doesn't matter because he's english uh, but yeah it's all going pretty well as you can see you can come through here you can see all the stuff that's happening and yeah it's nice it's nice it's all in one place it's good to have uh, it's called electric panther you can go and find it on fm scout or fm base i can't remember which one i got it from but it's one of those and uh, yeah so we can look at the progress of players you can change these to obviously be whatever you want but progress is something very key for this youth academy save paul Byrne has been bloody superb for us this season uh, he's averaged a 7.08 in 41 starts and one sub appearance as well uh, other youth players doing well a lot of people commented about harry jordan saying he better show some improvement with the amount of game time that you've given him. And oh boy has he. Look at this chart. He's gone from a two star there to a four star player. Because he's been playing so much this season. 31 appearances. One goal. Eight assists. One player of the match. A seven point naught. He has been really good. Playing well above his attributes. His mentals have grown quite a lot. His physicals have grown a hell of a lot. Which is awesome to see. And uh, yeah we're putting in some, uh, some good. Phil's time is running out for the manager. To improve the club's training facilities. Ah, that must have been something I promised him. Not technically my fault. The board won't allow me. I keep asking. I keep asking them. Uh, Wayne Harper has stepped into the first team quite a lot this year. Another one who's showing vast progress in his uh, in his uh, attributes. Five foot six, little Wayne Harper. Twenty nine appearances, six point seven two. Stepped up very nicely this season as well. Uh, Shane Tarmy is probably probably my like rookie of the year if we we're going to have something like that six foot four on the left wing man does he win a lot of headers against fullbacks it is awesome to see 30 appearances six goals 7.03 five assists he's made our left wing position his own to be honest and he's doing a cracking good job of it but the main one 16 year old and a lot of you were drawn to him in the last youth intake the main one 30 appearances 23 goals in his debut season john johnson is unbelievable he's got a little bit of a knockdown where he's got this injury but he's just starting to recover back up in his progress but 33 appearances in the league 12 goals two assists three player of the matches and a 6.83 to boot uh, john johnson looks like he's going to be absolutely superb a lot of you said with 
with pace and acceleration that he's got at that age, with finishing seven, he'll do really well for you, and he has. He's been playing as a striker. Him and Adam Hall sort of rotate if we only play one up front. We do have a... We, we, I'm changing tactics a lot in game when with things that I see and what happens, and it's working out really well. I think it's keeping the AI guessing to say, wow, we don't know how this team and this guy is going to play. But John Johnson and Adam Hall up front have been absolutely superb. If we just look by goals, you'll see Adam Horat in one front 31. Uh, Ad uh, John Johnson there in 23, who I have been calling JJ in the comments. Uh, Shane Tarmy up there in 8. Chippendale 8. Uh, Kazim 5. Uh, Lewis Hay 3. Kellett 3. 2 for uh, Hassan. 2 for Harper. 2 for McKenzie. And 2 for Harris as well. So, And then uh, 4 people on 1. A name that is missing from that, Jake Cassidy. Wow, has he dropped off. He has dropped off in terms of ability-wise and appearances. Only seven league appearances for us this year. 6.52 and no goals in the league. Um, he will be leaving on a free transfer at the end of this season. We're not going to give him a new contract. And I feel like we're in that point of the save where a number of our older players are not going to be getting new contracts. So Spencer Harris won't be getting a contract. Cassidy will not be getting a contract. Keller will not be getting a contract. Eyeball... He depends on what our youth intake looks like at centre-back. He may get a new contract for another season. Nicky Walker's not going to get a new contract. George Smith has just got a new one-year contract. He's only 29, as has Chippendale as well. So the five older statesmen of the club, or four of them definitely going, uh, Eyeball is the only one who may get a new one-year deal. But we'll have to go and see what the intake is like. So... We're going to put it off for a little bit longer because we're now going to jump into the schedule because obviously there's quite a lot to catch up on with this. But as you can see, it's all been going pretty well. It's a spattering of red, orange and green, as you would expect. More green than ever before in a previous season at this point, which is lovely to see. I think this run here around January, which is normally where we struggle because of fitness-wise for players, our youngsters have really stepped up in this. Um, two wins, a draw in the FA Trophy, won the sec won the replay, lost to Brackley Town, came back from that with a win against Hitchin, a draw against FC United. Um, another good run sort of between this game against Southport towards the end of February and then uh, the middle of March against Bradford PA went unbeaten for seven games there, which was awesome. And we're coming down to the, the sort of end of the season where at the moment... We're just on the fringes of that playoff spot. Uh, again, if we don't get the playoffs, I'm not too disappointed this season. We are building a pretty good squad with our youngsters. We are playing better football. It is progressing how I want it to progress, I think. And I still think if we get promoted now, it's too early for promotion. It's too early, but we'll have to see how it goes. But I do think uh, John Johnson, who unfortunately is injured for like five weeks. Uh, he's got three weeks left of his injury. This is the guy who I think is either going to be sold for a lot of money, will break our hearts and leave on a free, or will be with us for most of the lower leagues, let's say, in this save. Because at 15 years old, or 16 years old now, at 16 years old, with that pace, his dribbling, his finishing, his first touch, his, his off the ball needs to improve, but he is looking absolutely deadly for this level at the uh, Vanarama National League North. I'm worried that uh, another club is going to come in and try and poach him, so we really need to get his contract sorted as soon as possible. He is going to, uh, yeah, yeah, provisionally agreed to sign a new £20 a week contract on the uh, 20th of April, so that's not too far away, which is good. So... Yeah, I mean, I'm very excited about how the team are performing. It's going really, really well. And I know a lot of you have been saying, like, oh, I'd like to see a bit more gameplay and build up the characters. But you've got to remember, this is going to be such a long-term save. If I spent time building up these characters, by the time we got to the championship, none of these will be around anymore. So as we go up the divisions and there becomes more important games... We will watch and come back for gameplay and build into a bit of a story about these players and where they've come from and how they've been performing and things like that. But at the moment, I'm just loving the fact that without signing players, it's um, it's, it's tricky, but it's bloody good fun. Uh, and yeah, I'm really, really enjoying it. I think in here somewhere, if I remember rightly, was it Bishop's Cleave? Bishop's Cleave. I may have already discussed this because it was early on in the season. I think I did. Let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, we did discuss Bishop's Cleave where we played the first full 11 of all Academy graduates and we got a 5 3 win, which is awesome. And we're very close to putting out a team of nearly all Academy graduates every week. Trenary is the only one for now, 
that is highly unlikely to be replaced because he's so much better than what we've got in terms of the Hungarian Havetsi. Um And then alongside him is probably George Smith, club captain, not ready to drop him just yet. Um, although he's not been putting in stellar performances and he has got a bit of competition in terms of Babayaro, who's now in the youth academy as well. Babayaro's physicals really need to improve, but he could turn in to a, a pretty decent player. Again, he'll depend on what we get through the youth academy this time. But um, all in all, it's pretty good. But let's get in to the main bit of news then. So it's that bit of news there. So we're just going to skip all of these bits and we're going to go and have a look at the new intake of youth players for Geisley FC or AFC Geisley. Um, here we go then. This is what they look like. Okay, we've got a goalkeeper who's top of the list. Four and a half star, two star uh, current ability as well. So elite talents, there is a lot of them. There is top. There is a Swedish and a, an Australian in there as well, which is awesome. Peter Graham. So three top talents and the rest are elite. Ah, yes. I forgot to post that. Right now, I'm going to interrupt this before we go and look at the players. Um, the board agreed to do new youth... Uh, facilities or something training and youth coaching as well which is uh, awesome increased youth recruitment and increased youth coaching which has really helped and hopefully this is what has brought these guys through so our annual youth cadet ca cadets our youth candidate intake has arrived for assessment this is a wonderfully talented group of players and led by jamal vorhurst we could have the makings of a potential golden generation of our hands the youth candidates have been given trial contracts you can evaluate which players you want to keep blah -de blah -de blah all right so they're saying Warhurst is potentially the best striker. Another striker. That would see us change formation if we have an overload of strikers. But we'll stick a deep line forward. It looks like he can play left wing as well. So let's have a look though. Eldin Kadric is the first one up. Um, in fact, no, we're not. We're going to go Peter Graham because he's English. And he's only got one star uh, current ability at the moment. So Peter Graham, left winger. Pace 10, acceleration 13, crossing dribbling 7, first touch 10, passing 7, off the ball 8. He doesn't look too bad. He doesn't look too bad. He may get a bit of game time here or there next season. We'll have to wait and see. But at the moment, yeah, I think he looks slightly susceptible to injuries. Above average is his uh, susceptible to injuries ranking. But the fact he's got a bit of pace and those physicals aren't dreadful. They're not dreadful for a 16-year-old. I mean, the description is young striker. Maybe there is. Maybe there's the making of a pressing forward or an advanced forward in there with a the little bit of pace that he's got. Okay, well, Peter Graham is the first one we've looked at. Next up, we will have a look at the Swedish central midfielder, Eldin Kadric, who is here. And uh, very balanced. A very balanced player. Leadership is good. First touch is okay. Free kick's okay. It says a deep line playmaker. Passing eight. Again, potentially, I mean, potentially there's something there. Six foot, decent jumping reach, de decent stamina, natural fitness is really good. There's something potentially there. In, in terms of injury, again, above average susceptibility to injuries, but no, nothing recurring at the moment. Yeah, all right, not too bad. Eldon Kadric uh, there. The final top talent then is centre-back Daniel Driscoll, so... What else? We've got another centre-back up here, Wayne McManus as well, which is useful to see. A left-back, which is awesome to see. A right-back, which is good as well. Daniel Driscoll then, or Driscoll, Driscoll. Um, centre-back, holding midfielder, central midfielder, right-footed centre-back, Australian, level-headed. Uh, one and a half current ability, three nearly four-star potential ability, 16 years old. Six foot one, jumping reach is decent, a very aggressive, heading's okay, tackling's good at 11 for his age, marking's not looking too bad, positioning's pretty good. Yeah, again, there could be, there could be something there, there could be a decent player in there for us, um, which I'm quite, I'm quite excited about. We need defenders, I've said, our front are going forward, we've got enough good youngsters coming through, dives into tackles again. Wow, okay, I mean, something to keep an eye on that. But Daniel Driscoll, let me know what you think of him. Now we head into the elite talents for the Geisley youth system with this one. We've got Ollie White Doherty, attacking midfield left. Yes, please. Okay, five foot two, so really short, but pace, acceleration, agility, crossing is good, composure is good, dribbling's not bad for this level. Okay, he looks like. 
our left wing problems are pretty sorted, to be honest. I think him um, and Tami could be good little rotation options on that left wing, which is which is good. Because we've actually been struggling to replace Tami when he's been knackered or injured on that left-hand side. So, yes, good start for the elites. Very happy with Oli White Doherty. Diminutive winger. That's another way you could describe Lionel Messi, although his uh, personality is low determination, which isn't isn't amazing. Um, but yeah, we'll see how that goes. Ollie White Doherty looks pretty decent. Next up, Stephen Lazenby, midfield right, pace ten, acceleration seven, natural fitness is good. Um, uh, yeah, not as good. Young winger, five foot five, unambitious personality, so won't be asking for a lot of money. Thank you for whoever put that in the comments. Uh, he's actually left-footed, so would suit an inverted winger role a bit further up the pitch. Not bad pace, not bad. Be interesting to see how he can progress. Up to five-star potential ability, four-star at the moment. So, okay, yeah, Stephen Lazenby. He's got funky hair, and he is in to Geisley. Ryan Potter. AMR next is uh, is up. Ryan Potter. Pace 10, acceleration 13. Jumping reach is decent. Six foot. Crossing and dribbling need to improve a bit. First touch is okay. Long shots are poor. Passing's decent. Really lacking composure. Off the ball's not great. Really wants to work for the team, though. Unambitious, level headed media handling. Tries killer balls often, I don't mind. But yeah, for 15, again, for 15 years old at this level, it's not looking too bad because of those physicals. Um, yeah, Ryan Potter's. I'm I'm not too upset with uh, with Ryan Potter at the moment. Ryan, another Ryan, Ryan Baker, a midfield left this time. Uh, what have we got? Five foot seven, low determination, uh, pace twelve, acceleration thirteen, crossing, dribbling, not too bad. Long shots, passing needs a bit of work. Again, right footed on that left hand side, dives into tackles again. I'm gonna have to look at the head of youth development. I don't think he has anything that should suggest. He wants his players to dive into tackles, but uh, a lot of these players do have it. Strength one is an absolute killer, and balance four, when you're asking him potentially to dribble with the ball, is pretty poor as well. But the agility might make up for that. Okay, Ryan Baker doesn't look dreadful. Um, potentially something we can work with there with Ryan Baker. Uh, who is up next? Chris Ebanks, defender right, but looks like he can play all up the right-hand side. One star at the moment. We do need another right-back. And I don't think this is the guy. Okay, that's a bit disappointing. Five foot ten, one star current ability, four and a half star potential ability, uh, a realist, media handling, outspoken, volatile, and confrontation confrontational. Lovely. Um pace is okay, acceleration's poor, fitness is okay, teamwork positioning's pretty bad for this position. Very aggressive. I don't think he's my sort of player, but maybe there's a way you can see in his, his attributes there that we could train him to do something else. Dives into tackles again. We're definitely going to have to look at um, our head of youth development and see if he's got anything that would suggest that is uh, a common a common occurrence. Uh, defender centre then, Wayne McManus. What have you got for us? Six foot one, centre back, outspoken media handling. Tackling 13 is awesome. Composure is pretty good. Jumping reach is good. Strength is low. Uh, headings okay. Uh, yeah, there. I think we might be saying goodbye to Eibel. I don't think he's going to be getting a new contract. Right-footed centre-back. I do quite like the look of him. Lacks a bit of acceleration over the first couple of yards, but I think there's um there's potential. I think there's potential. I think there's potential there. I do. I do think there's potential there. Wayne McManus. Excited to see what he can bring to the team as well. Next up, I was going to say Daniel, but that's not Daniel. It's Danai McFadden. McFadden. Faden? No, Fadian. Yeah, Dan Danai McFadden. Wow. Okay. Uh, attack on field right, attack on field center, and striker. He is six foot two. Um, he's not the quickest. His first touch is incredible. He's got pretty good flair. Off the ball's not bad. Passing's okay. Crossing, dribbling. He's a right-footed right winger. Good balance. Yeah. Well, I mean, he dwells on the ball, which isn't ideal for a winger. But again, with his height and that jumping reach, attacking the back post could be quite a good thing um, if we're going to do it. Unambitious is there as well. But again, not dreadful. He's not dreadful for this level and it is does look like a very good youth intake that we've had at this point right that is danny danny dan i mcfadden 
Wow. Okay. Well, Jamal Warhurst, we're going to leave until the end um, because he's obviously the, the best player that our assistant talks about. So next up, Phil Skinner, left midfielder, defensive winger. Um, what was he? Five foot ten, current ability two, potential ability four or five, light-hearted. Uh, pace seven, acceleration five. That's not brilliant. Teamwork's good, vision's good, work rate's good. I've just realized this hides a... Can I move that bar a little bit? So it's very annoying. They hide one attribute. But anyway, uh, crossing's pretty poor. Dribbling's pretty poor. Tackling's poor. I mm, I don't I, I don't mind tries long range passes. I don't mind that. I'm not sure. He's he's two footed, which is very handy. Left foot very strong. Right foot very strong. Fifteen years old. He could be more of a holding midfielder, where he doesn't need to have that much pace at all but his first touch is good passing's okay teamwork vision work rate is all pretty decent yeah okay determination 16 i like as well so okay phil skinner you may be more of a central midfielder than a than a winger mate sorry especially with two foot two footedness as well uh jack cartwright another winger attacking midfield right midfield right attacking field center attacking field left jack cartwright is here right footed pace eight acceleration 11 uh, crossing, dribbling, okay. Seven, passing, eight, off the ball, work rate's okay. Determination, nine. Yeah, it's a bit much of a muchness. Nothing stand out at the moment. 16 years old, uh, fairly sporting personality. Yeah, I think he's a bit... I think he's a bit weaker for an elite talent that we've got in. One and a half star. I, yeah, I don't see him doing too much. Les Knight, left back. Pace six, acceleration nine. That is awful. Uh, six foot one, likes to bring the ball out of defense. Natural fitness, jumping reach, balance is good. Um, tackling eight, passing six, marking five, crossing three. If, if we put you as a center back, aggression, bravery needs to go up a bit. Anticipation, concentration, positioning, tackling, jumping. Yeah, you're more of a center back. You're definitely more of a center back. Six foot one as well. Young fullback, unambitious. Okay, yeah, uh, again, there's something there that we could potentially use in Les Knight. I don't mind that. Uh, Roger Ricards, one and a half star at the moment, four star, potentially five star, attacking midfield right. Roger Ricards, yes, 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 yes. Pace, 14, acceleration, 12. Crossing, dribbling is okay. Passing's good. Uh, technique's good. Flair is there with eight, anticipation, six. Work rate's really, really bad. He's going to be a lazy winger. But, um, again, I think there is something you can work with. Speed at this level is pretty crucial. And I feel like him to bolster out our youth team and step into the first team when needed could definitely be an option. It could definitely be an option. Roger Ricards is there. Now we're down to our two final like best players. Michael O'Shea, the Irish goalkeeper, and Jamal Warhurst. We'll look at the goalkeeper first. Michael O'Shea, sweeper-keeper, goalkeeper, two-star already. Four and a half star potential. Oh, yeah. Okay, six foot. Um, acceleration's good. Agility, 16. Command of area, 70. Yeah, the goalkeeping stats in themselves need a bit of a improvement. He's not going to be replacing Trinari. He's a, he's battling with Havetzi, right? The Hungarian Havetzi for the backup spot in the team. And at 16 years old, he looks pretty decent. I mean, we can compare him. Let's compare him straight away to Victor Havetzi. So you can see two very different goalkeepers. So Havetzi is dominating aerially. You've got to remember Havetzi's had, what, two years as a, a trainee as well, youth academy trainee. So shot stopping and aerially, he's much better. But speed, physical, mental is all Michael O'Shea. So given that I think these, these three things, mental, speed, and physical, are harder to train through training than these... I've got a feeling that eventually Michael O'Shea will be taking over from Havetzi as our backup goalkeeper, which is uh, which is very exciting, isn't it? Very exciting. Right, now on to the really exciting thing. Jamal Warhurst is going to lead. He's going to lead this golden generation up into the Premier League. Jamal Warhurst, striker, attack and field left, attack and field centre. What have you got for us? I mean, my immediate instinct... Is that that is a lot of average stats. But then when I look a bit deeper, I think that's a lot of average stats, which are 11, 9 to 13, which I think means he's going to be pretty good because he's currently 16 years old and he has 
Jumping reach 13, balance 13, pace 10, agility 12, composure 12, finishing 9, flare 11, teamwork 12, off the ball. Work rate's really low, but yeah, I like the look of this guy. If we could potentially get his passing up a bit, I wouldn't mind sitting him in behind, but yeah, okay. okay. Tries killer balls often, likes to lob the goalkeeper. Jamal Warhurst could be, I mean, determination 4. I really don't like low determined players, but... We might have to let him off. He could have. He could get some goals. He could get some goals. Jamal Warhurst. Okay. Let me know down below which is your favourite of that intake. Who do you think is going to have the biggest impact on this team for Geisley? Yeah. Interesting, interesting intake. Lots of wingers. A lot, a lot of wingers. Right. Let's have a quick look then. Dave Curry. So, um, information. Uh, I've got to try and remember where it is in here now. Um... Dynamics? No, it's up here, isn't it? Managerial. That's all right. So managerial coaching style. Uh, tends to not. Tends to not do this. Sky. Yeah. No. There's nothing. I swear there was somewhere you could see what sort of. A, oh, it's down here, isn't it? Information. So he wants to. Play, he likes to play route one. Yeah. Coaching style attacking. I quite like that. Four four two or a five three two DM wing backs. Uh, standard pressing style less often, playmating balance and marking style mix. There's nothing there that suggests he's encouraging the players that are coming through to dive into tackles. So, yeah, I'm not sure about that. But we've got it. It seems that we've got it like much more often than we should. Ah, oh, a question I had for everyone. So we're currently playing a four uh, two three one. We're currently playing a four two three one, which I think is the a formation I want to carry on using in this save. It's pretty. Um, generic and easy to slip players into a 4-2-3-1. We still have the wing-back formation when we're a bit more defensive. But I've been reading your comments and a lot of you have said, you know, you want to get ahead of youth development that has a great um, uh, personality and suits a system that you're playing and how you play it. So at the moment, we're playing like a custom Gagan Press on a 4-2-3-1. This is our current head of youth development. Working with youngsters 20... Um, pretty good mental attributes, which I think does help in terms of bringing youngsters through. Whether that's right or wrong, I don't know. But working with youngsters 20, pretty decent mental attributes and a fairly professional personality doesn't really suit how we're asking the team to play. So, if we go into staff, go into the staff shortlist, I have put Dodd Simmers on our shortlist. Working with youngsters 19, nowhere near as good mental attributes. Judging player ability and potential is really, really poor. Whether that matters or not, I don't know. Given that it's highlighted, I'd like to think it does matter. But um, yeah, working with youngsters 19 and mentals are pretty worse than Dave Curry. However, Gagan Press, for Gagan Press tactical style, preferred formation 4 2 3 1 DM AM wide, and coaching style is mental. Now, does that mean. He's going to bring players through that have better mental attributes as youngsters. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I'm intrigued to know, like, pressing style more often. We're doing a bit of pressing. Playing mentality cautious, we don't quite do that, but we mix our mentality up depending on who we're playing against. So, the second question of the episode, do we stick with Dave Curry or do we go for Dodd Simmers in terms of, um, in terms of our head of youth development? Now, Dave Curry is also under-18s manager, so we'd have to potentially go and find the new under-18s manager as well. But when you compare them like this, it looks pretty obvious, right? You stick with Dave Curry because of the attributes he's got. But when we look at tactics, we're currently playing a 4-2-3-1 DM wide. Um, we're not, and I've never played a 4-4-2 in this save. I have played a 5-3-2 DM white wing backs, as you've seen. Tactical style, we are more playing a... Custom Gagan Press. I wouldn't say it's always Gagan Press, but we are playing a custom Gagan Press. Mentality, we're probably more around balanced, which is Dave Curry at the moment. I'd say we're more balanced or positive than we are cautious. Pressing style, we do press. Even if it's a low block, we press them when they're in our blocking position. And our marking style is mixed. So that would, again, suit um, Dave Curry, to be honest, and what he's trying to do. So those of you that are more in the knowledge, let me know down below because I think this is quite important from what everyone's been saying in the comment section for a head of youth development about what we want to do so um yeah I'm, I'm banking on you guys to let me know and uh help me out with the head of youth development so that's that's their playing styles a quick check again in terms of um attributes if we highlight for the head of youth development there you go so it's working with youngsters and that judging player 
ability and potential. So Dave Curry has eights in both of them and 20 in youngsters. We have 19 for Dodd Simmers and five and four. So you have to let me know down below. I've been rattling on. I was hoping to do a game in this episode, but there's been so much to cover that we haven't had a chance. So we'll be back for the end of the season, which may see us into the playoffs. And if we get to the playoffs... We'll come back for those as uh, match days because they'll be very, very exciting. So thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one where it'll either be Kettering Town on the final day of the season or we'll be into the playoffs and that's what we'll be back for. Thank you so much for watching. Leave your comments, suggestions, tips, hints below and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.